Hello everyone, this is Choosing the Red Pill with Rajesh and Umar and we welcome you to the first episode, Coronavirus, Challenges, Lessons and the Future. Hi Umar and warm welcome to our viewers as well. Yes, congratulations Umar for our first episode on uh, Choosing the Red Pill. So yeah, let's analyze the various responses we have seen uh, from different quarters on social, political, and economical levels on this pandemic, which has, you know, co infected around 3.5 million people around the world and till as of date has caused about quarter million deaths. And, right. and, this... put, and, and you know, it has virtually put everybody on the planet in a, in a under a lockdown. So what challenges do you see uh, in the fight against this pandemic right now? Uh, there are a lot of challenges uh, uh, that uh, I can see uh, right now. See, this tragedy, this disaster is being called uh, the biggest disaster since uh, at least Second World War, right? And for good reasons. Uh, nothing after that has affected so many people at such a huge level. Now, what challenges we are facing right now is the first thing is, of course, misinformation that is being spread. And the second thing that is uh, hampering our battle is the lack of scientific temperament that I can see. For example, there are people who do not have an understanding of how a virus works and how human biology functions. And these people have a huge uh, following among masses and they are misleading the people and giving all sorts of remedies all over the internet on how to cure this virus and why it has happened in the first place. I see uh, bizarre theories by different uh, groups, different do, do, people from different I, I hope you don't. I hope you don't forget Trump out of this. Yeah, Trump as well and all the, uh, you know, some, some uh, rabbi was saying that homosexual acts are responsible for this. Some cleric was saying that women are wearing some sort of clothes, so this right, is the reason. Yeah. Some, some are claiming it's a retribution of sins and all sorts of groups, they, they, and they are not just some fringe uh, uh, elements outside of the uh, mainstream. No, they are basically in the mainstream. So that is the biggest problem that we are facing because the people who have invested their lives, their whole lives in understanding how viruses function, how human biology function, and they are qualified to comment on the situation, and they should be paid attention to. Yeah, the biologists, the scientists. So, and their uh, observations should be shared with the public more effectively, and people who are educated, it is their responsibility to convey what is the truth, and what is the reality to the uneducated masses, for their own good. Right. For I, their own I agree, though, you know, I agree for at least for this matter, you know, uh, let experts should be allowed to speak more and their voices should be uh, exactly. given, more, given more space rather than the political and voices or exactly. the voices that don't really I would, matter. I would even go on to say that countries who have invested more in scientific research and innovation, they have a higher chance of containing it effectively and also they have a higher probability of coming up with the vaccine, right? Right. So, uh, so we have to focus on on tackling these challenges, uh, which brings me to an observation that coming to India, the country uh, that we are living in right now, a country of uh, one point more than 1.3 billion people, densely populated, people of all sort of faiths are living here. So how do you think that you know India has responded to this to this pandemic? What are your views on that? Well, you know. Uh barring few instances of as as you also said you know the voices that really shouldn't have come to the fore for example you know the urine drinking party or uh, ayush ministry you know suggesting some stupid medicines right or, right or, or or some kind of from some sections of society there is a generalized xenophobia against muslims rather than reserving it particularly to tablighi jamaat you know uh, you know their criticism of tablighi jamaat yeah, instead uh, of just identifying large that mark which was responsible. Yeah, so barring these instances on the societal level, on the political level, I think India's response has been pretty decent. You know, uh, there is a section of society which uh, doesn't leave any stone unturned in calling Modi a fascist. 
or yeah. uh, and i personally never considered him as a fascist but i did think of him some as somebody who was strict or somebody who has an iron hand somebody who could be an extension of vallabhai patel you know the iron man so okay. and and push comes to shove when he is in the corner he would use certain stricter measures in such kind of conditions but here i see a completely different modi at you know during this pandemic he right. has absolutely shattered my image of him you know uh, he has come out completely out and out as a liberal in the spirit of you know if you if you hear any of his speeches or man ki baat or anything that he has said he has only spoken about compassion cooperation from citizens and uh, solidarity among citizens he has not caused any kind of polarization he has not you know he has curbed his right wing uh, impulses he has you know e- even he has gone forth and, uh, and it know, is important it is important also for people to come together from all different com- communities and um, tackle this problem together that is also important right exactly and you know even he has he has gone forward and put forth and proposals for regional cooperation among the sark countries asked them to pool the funds uh, you know and uh, how to discuss and how to scale up the infrastructure for healthcare or uh, you know all those kind of responses he has yeah, also. exchanged he has, he has he has you know he has been proactive in exchanging of ideas at least at regional level which is his sphere of influence he is not a i i can't still call him a globalized superpower leader but he wherever he has a sphere of influence he has gone forth and tried to you know uh, have a cooperation with those kind of countries so you know one may argue whether modi's response has been enough or not but uh, it has nothing like totalitarian it has completely liberal response in spirit of cooperation and compassion and solidarity so what according to you you know are the key reasons that re- this pandemic has become a global threat rather than remaining region specific um yes i think uh, like i said uh, the 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 biggest reason is of course the the misinformation or rather i would say the the suppression of information so that is the biggest thing because of course this is not the first time that any virus has attacked uh, other life forms it is not the first time there have been many epidemics before many of them have come out of china and right. for for good reasons so i would say that the big big reason is suppression of information and even it might sound outrageous but i would even go on to blame communism for for this for this global outbreak and i have my reasons for saying so both indirectly and directly if we observe uh, china's history we see that the usage of wild animals in medicinal purpose they, it has been there for thousands of years it is there but 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 the usage of uh, wild animals as a part of diet of a common man was not there till 20th century it was not there it happened after the regime of mao zedong and uh, his great leap forward and other economic policies uh, his whole uh, communist regime that he uh, he was running so it basically brought the country to uh, to verge of famine millions of people were starving and till 1960s they were forced to uh, the, in, in rural areas they were forced to eat whatever uh, wild animals they could find including snakes and pangolins and bats and civets and what not so and when it was brought to the notice of nine, uh, of uh, the government in 1970s instead of banning it they legalized it because they did not have an alternative or they did not have better practices uh, to uh, give livestock and food for the masses so they legalized it despite knowing the health threat associated with it so even, even, even globally in, even globally of all the viruses that have come from china you know including the first plague the black death the third plague which killed 2 million 2 million people in india right right and and sars and you know all these viruses that have all have you know originated in china we yeah, did yeah. not know uh, you know in case of, let's say for example in case of black death we did not know for at least 200 years that it originated in china you know until right. the germ theory came to fore yeah we did not know about microorganisms for a long time so we did not know how is it spreading 
and china has been a bastion of uh, these viruses for good reason like i said and uh, how communism is directly responsible is that it is through communism that any uh, person or any political party gains that sort of control over the system that it is able to curb the flow of information very effectively right because so, uh, when we notice that uh, the first case of uh, the this virus uh, can be traced back to november according to some report and we are getting to know about it by january right so that is how the information was suppressed on the other hand if this virus originated for example in any scandinavian country for example or united states so the free press would have made an issue out of it and right. we it it would have other countries would have taken precautionary me- measures okay. Be- much before as before who telling it to the world it is the media that would have come out and told it to the world then the pandemic is coming exactly. yeah and who is the whole topic for a different discussion it's a, it it has come out as a disappointment oh, it is in cahoots with right now inception of that information yeah it is until till january it was assuring the world that there is no evidence of human to human transmission human to human transmission right and it we know that it is it turned out to be blatant lie so this uh, you know there are reports saying that if if, uh, if only the reports of human to human transmission had come out at least 3 weeks earlier there would have been 95% less fatalities across the world and it is only for those 3 weeks that you know china suppressed the information which has caused the whole havoc right now exactly so that suppression of information uh, made all the difference uh, and Absolutely. we could have been in a completely different place right now so i would say though i personally uh, identify with a lot of uh, socialist policies myself uh, especially regarding uh healthcare and uh, education of course so there is no debate on that but uh, after a point the the when communism takes over it completely restricts the flow of information which exactly happened at the time of chernobyl in 1980 right the the, the death toll and everything it was not communicated to the rest of the world so that is how it uh, uh, turned into a disaster and i don't know I, i don't think anybody knows for sure whether it is man made virus or it has come from pangolin or bat i don't think any uh, one can only come to that conclu- conclu- one can only come to that conclusion only if china allows that kind of research to happen in the first place yes and china is threatening any country any agency that is um, trying to uh, get into an investigation about the origin surprising, surprising part is that it has recently also disallowed who to do that research who yes exactly so what i'm saying is that china has been uh, suppressing information and right now it is using this global outbreak to further its agenda its hegemony over the world trade over the world market and it is uh, using every uh, tool possible to uh, make its control it will, sir, it will certainly try to capture that opportunity definitely is doing it and uh, so, so what what do you think that uh, you know when we see china furthering its agenda using this uh, outbreak to its uh, benefit so wh- what do you think this pandemic how do you think it will affect the globalization in itself and the international state so what do you think it will affect like? well globalization is primarily of about exchange and interconnectedness of uh, as trades good services uh, on its, all multiple levels like social political and economical at social level i think there is a major uh, there is a consensus uh, majorly that uh, physical interactions have to be lessened and there is an impetus on uh, social media interactions or online interactions so we all know that is the near future change that we can force but global and and you know this is the these are the globalized platforms like facebook and whatsapp and things like which have made you know the such kind of uh, exchange possible between human to human at, at social level mm-hmm. but at uh, econ- at you know trade level or political level what i foresee is there is a need for more globalization rather than less because there is a more need for interconnectedness rather right now rather than less 
this is a movement for more compassion more global solidarity rather than less although there are voices in us europe even in india mm-hmm. raising a bogey of uh, you know nativism versus globalization uh, as if the both are inversely proportional to each other you know if globalization the nationalism will rise or if nationalism rises the globalization will reduce but that's not true as as, as you know we can see from the example of modi himself he is the one who has kept the interest of india at center mm-hmm. while still reaching out cooperation seeking cooperation from regional partners so that is also possible you know one can be a nationalist and still be a globalist one can still right. seek out global solidarity and uh, still be a nativist so i yeah I one has to keep that, that balance yeah correct so i don't uh, see as it's uh, as a you know nationalism versus globalization kind of a thing globalization is here to stay no matter how much voices go against it we are more interconnected interwoven and intermeshed a world than ever before and mm-hmm. it is impossible to retreat right now yes there will be a uh, a push for production to be moved locally or at least divert uh, their eggs from china in right. some of those in some of those scenarios yes india could be a plausible beneficiary to that kind of if that such a thing happens and mm. uh, india needs to do a lot of work to be prepared if such an opportunity falls into its lap to be able to you know uh, cater to global manufacturing businesses that right. try to ship from china to india yes they are so, many of them are shifting their base from china to india I many uh, shift, i don't know if they are shifting but yes there are voices to shift you know there are calls to shift from china there are calls yeah there are calls exactly yeah. but having said that there is a need for more interconnectedness among the world and rather than less so when you talk about interconnectedness and cooperation but uh, there are uh, instances for example if we take the example of european union uh, we see that the kind of cooperation that was uh, expected out of european union and different countries it was not uh, no way to be seen right when italy was at, uh, falling apart the european countries did not come to its uh, and china another uh, took it took its benefit so do you think that european union has failed its purpose sort of see we are still i think we are still in the midst of the storm the storm is not yet over so it wouldn't be right to say that european countries have not come to the you know aid of italy Uh, we'll mm-hmm. see during the time but yes you are absolutely right it is a time for regional as is it is a time for global solidarity it is also a time for regional hand holding if european country for example if let's say italy right now needs the you know to recover and reform and rebuild itself from the aftermath of the crisis uh, if european countries do not hand hold each other and rebuild and help each other recover then uh, any external force like us or china can come in and take over and you know offer them aid and everything and buy their businesses and help them recover exactly what us did after the you know, uh, world war 2 to japan it devastated japan but then it rebuilt it also and china can also do the same right. thing to italy right now but, yeah yeah so and you know uh, and yet you know uh, there are people who i find the responses of quite amusing to myself and uh, they say that you know humans are the virus and mm-hmm. corona is the vaccine so uh, saying that you know large number of deaths that corona has caused they are trying to justify those deaths i don't know how would you think about that have you heard yeah, that yeah yes i i have uh, basically uh, heard about it and i have seen people in all seriousness uh, say that and i wanted to bring it up uh that um, you know humans are the virus who are destroying this earth and uh, corona has come as a vaccine of nature and nature is healing itself so uh, i think that again uh, takes us back to the uh, lack of uh, scientific temperament and lack of awareness about how things function and like i said in the beginning there are some religious group to have joined uh, the virus join hands with virus against other religious groups right right similarly these people have joined hands with virus against the whole of humanity so this is worse right 
when we look at the history viruses have been threatening other life forms ever since the origin of life itself since time immemorial right and our ancestors have been fighting these pandemics and these uh, disease outbreaks their whole lives and those who survived so their offsprings are alive today right so we have to understand that uh, that process of how evolution works and today after the scientific revolution in last 500 years or so uh, it has brought us to the comfort that we can sit in our air conditioned room and look out the bal- balcony and uh, say in our in a very condescending way that we uh, this virus is doing something great killing a large number of people and the nature is healing itself so i think this uh, mentality arises out of that comfort uh that the scientific revolution has in a, brought in a, in a in a very in a very perversely uh, ironical way yeah uh, in, in a in a in a very perversely ironical way it turns out that the humanitarians are themselves anti-humanists in this case yes and they claim to be humanitarian they claim to be environmentalists and they claim but their views are very genocidal so i do not subscribe to it in any way and i think it is important to take care of the nature because we have to live here uh, as as human race but uh, taking care of nature at the expense of human race uh, cannot be supported uh, in my opinion right. so right. that is that is what i think about it and um, uh, the scientists who are uh, working day and night to come up with the vaccine so we are basically uh, downplaying their efforts and because we are sort of amu- uh, mocking them ridiculing them so i do not uh, find it appropriate uh, myself though of course they have the right to say whatever they want but uh, i do not uh, subscribe to it and so uh, i it brings me to uh, let's let's look at the scenario because many people are saying that we are standing at a turning point in history and i agree with it that this pandemic is changing the way we look at the world the changing the way we look at ourselves so what do you think that the new post covid uh, world order what would it look like uh, to you what are the possibilities and uh, what what does it look like to you well as you just said you know uh, certainly uh, corona virus has stopped the humans in their tracks all over the world and it has put the world into a reset position right now and we all have the time to at least ponder over what next is coming so in, in right. then, you know uh, as i said earlier i foresee globalization increasing and not decreasing and uh, it's only globalized world you know the countries put together can hold china and who are responsible for the suppression of information no one country can do it alone so i certainly okay. also see healthcare becoming a part of national security debate you know as a national security measure which will also justify uh, budgetary allocation increased budgetary allocation toward healthcare you know i certainly want to see that happening and uh, but uh, right. there there are a couple of scenarios that can come out of uh, what depends on what kind of scenario will take over it depends on uh, first of all depends on how you eu responds or you know how european countries respond to the pandemic in case of what we already spoke about earlier you know for example whether european countries for example like italy whether they accept aid from us or china so mm-hmm. you know so if let's say in hypothetical scenario let they let's say they accept aid from china in, mm-hmm. in in that scenario us which already in under trump administration which has already trying to give up its position as a you know world superpower and trying to make america great again uh, in in that sense china will take up that place and fill up the vacuum and try to become the world power instead of uh, us mm-hmm. the other scenario is uh, if eu takes aid from us rather than china in that case of in that scenario i see us uh, reinforcing its hegemony as a world superpower but it you know you we know you in either cases the un role the mediator role is going to diminish so it will be a one to one confrontation kind of a cold war or building up a firewall directly between us and china 
right so so if that happens i see uh, us uh, you know trying to give redefine the objectives of nato as to not only focus on russia but also focus on china but in case if it happens you know then it will need asian partners to be included in the membership of nato as well for example japan right. philippines south korea and india to join nato so right. i don't know if that will happen or not but these are two possible scenarios that can happen the third mm-hmm. scenario is if instead of trump getting reelected in us joe biden gets reelected if that happens hypothetically speaking then i don't see direct confrontation between happening between us and china no, it's not but happening rather, yeah. but rather going through the established uh, you know mediators like g7 g20 who will try to pull in the resources all from all over the world and try to rebuild europe and everybody else or mm. demanding the repatriation from china for the countries so these yeah. are the three scenarios that i can see happening which side the camel will sit we don't know yet but yeah, know. so these are three possible like there was, scenarios there was there see uh, personally i uh, uh, do not see uh, joe biden getting elected uh, personally so and and looking uh, but but yeah if he gets elected actually so the confrontation with china would not be that harsh as in the case of trump absolutely so i would i would say that uh, there was a time when trump was also uh, going soft on china and he said that i have interacted with the xi jinping and uh, he refused to call it uh, chinese virus for uh, for in one tweet that he made well, after having a conversation also do, i also do not subscribe to the uh, thing of you know calling it a chinese virus because that doesn't make any difference i mean yeah yeah i am not saying that i am against it or for it but i'm kind of indifferent yeah. to it because for me what matters most is whether you hold china responsible after the storm has passed or not it doesn't matter what you call it right now whether you call it you know build the momentum toward calling it a china virus and build up the xenophobic uh, attitude you know uh, or not it doesn't matter to me mm-hmm. what matters to me is whether collectively all the countries together hold who and china responsible or not i mean you, you know you can you can call it a china virus right now and let's say that fad has peaked and then you know today we have small memories once the storm has passed nobody passed nobody would call it a china virus and then if Can you don't hold china and then if you don't hold china china responsible for the suppression of information then calling it to chinese virus would make no sense you know that doesn't make doesn't make any difference it is more important to uh, you know uh, hold it responsible and the xenophobia reminds me of something that uh, there have been uh, reports of uh, attacks on asian people chinese and uh, even some people in Uh, india north eastern people so that is uh, north horrific. eastern people in america and north eastern people in israel as well you know they had been attacked yeah yeah exactly so that is uh, that only adds up to the problem and uh, it it uh, no, apart from the the xenophobia thing aside i think it is also stupid because even if you suspect that someone has uh, this virus and you are going to beat him up then you are only increasing your chances of getting infected i mean okay. even if you suspect <laughs> even if you suspect so the best thing is you know uh and of course uh the jokes aside uh, it is of course uh, horrible and xenophobic to just assume by looking at someone that uh, they are you know carriers of uh, virus so it is important to just practice social distancing and uh, be safe and uh, you know uh, follow the advice uh, by the health officials so that is what i think about it and uh, i think it has been a good uh, conversation i Absolutely. would uh, request all the yeah i would uh, request all the uh, viewers also to please give their comments about the issue whatever their views are and uh, please uh, stay safe stay home and practice all the um, uh, social distancing measures and precautionary measures as much possible and we'll uh, see you soon with the next episode uh, any soon as, as soon as possible thank you all right thank you omar and thank you viewers for watching And yes keep choosing the red pill stay safe see you soon again bye bye